to my film and TV channel and we're going over with yes trepidation as we always do over to the BBC today because we're going to have a look at something that's currently available on BBC iPlayer and has been on BBC since the 16th of June so we'll talk about something called Queen of Oz please if you're new to the channel push that subscribe button push the bell notifications everything film and TV review vlogs information like this and reviews as well and other people's views there's not a lot on this one Queen of Oz so be mainly mine but uh, we've got a couple of guys that we uh, sort of do quote from time to time to listen to and their views very interesting actually on, on this one which I do differ slightly so we'll have a look at that and if you can if you do like Queen of Oz or you don't like Queen of Oz or you do like the effort I've made just give us a thumbs up guys it's uh, be much appreciated yeah it premiered on BBC One on the 16th of June is running until the 21st of July I'm recording this as at the 3rd of July because I've, I've binge watched it in the morning and early afternoon so yes uh, possibly not the best thing to binge watch uh, we'll talk about that later on it's on BBC iPlayer now if you want to do that and it is a situation comedy that's what it's classed as developed and starring one of my favourites uh, from many many years and for many years uh, Catherine Tate yes and it's about a princess it's about Princess Georgina played by Catherine herself of course the black sheep of a fictional British royal family who spent her spoilt life partying and being plastered all over the tabloids in the wake of her latest scandal her mother the Queen takes the unprecedented step of abdicating her or abdicating her, yeah, that's, that's the word, abdicating her Australian throne in favour of her daughter, hoping that some real responsibility will make her come to her senses. I'm not sure about the legality of that and uh, as it works, but uh, it, it's a comedy. It's not real. It's not real life, is it? This stars, well, Catherine Tate, of course, as the princess, Nick Wardley as, Nick, Nicky Wardley, sorry, as lady-in-waiting Annabelle. Uh, yeah, I do like Nicky Wardley, uh, as in with this, though, a lot, a lot these sort of other actors are not quite given the wings to fly in this one I don't think they're not really given material to work although I did quite like the pool of acting talent Robert Colby plays as private secretary Bernard that's a good name William McKenna is PA uh, Matthew uh, Stroke Craig yeah you'll, you'll know if you watch it Rob Collins is head of security and Anthony Brandon Wong as master of the household Wee Wee Weng Wee Wee Weng something yeah Wei 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 Weng that's it Wei Wei that's how I pronounce it Wee Wee no Wei Wei Jenna Owen is director of communications and Rachel Gordon plays the Australian prime minister the poor put on Republican uh, that we get in this the public are okay with it, not not quite hitting heights. It's getting an average of 5.9 out of 10. Now, that's based on 570 scores and reviews. I do expect that to drop slightly. You do get a lot of film and crew putting reviews on early doors. So, you know, you've got the cameramen and the, the electricians and the, the carpenters and everyone told to go away and put a, a good review on Internet Movie Database. So I think that 5.9 will drop a little bit as we get more reviews in, but not a total disaster based on that. But we've got a couple of critics who've watched it that I do quote from time to time. We've got Lucy Mangan from The Guardian. She gave it three out of five. She said, The Queen of Oz is a solidly written and well-constructed series with lots of callbacks within each episode nicely drawn relationships among the main and peripheral characters it certainly are although she didn't find she didn't find the show spectacularly funny as I didn't either uh, she concluded uh, Lucy that it's extraordinarily watchable and praised performances of Tate Rob Collins and Robert Colby I think the cast do a great a great job with as I said not the great not the greatest plots and storyline and comedy it's supposed to be a comedy uh, Lucy described the main characters truly and refreshingly monstrous she is well she plays a part well there's no there's no real if you like uh coming around for her she doesn't doesn't get any empathy by the end of it it's uh you know she plays a, a very very good role and yes i could i could actually hear nan at times just occasionally you know a favorite character one of her favorite characters from years gone by and nan i could hear that at times as well uh, for an Australian slant, yeah, I've gone over to Kylie Northover of the Sydney Morning Herald, thinking, well, would they like this? I wasn't too sure. I'm not Australian, I don't know. But uh, this lady did, actually. She praised Tate's performance while describing it as a mostly silly fun show that occasionally veers into darker comedy while still feeling at, old at times old-fashioned. Yeah, I, I 
I don't think there's much darker comedy in it. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of comedy in it. Um, silly fun, she said, didn't she? Well, it was silly. Um, not takes best for me by a long, long way. I was uh, I was happy though to spend every episode with her because literally she don't, she's never off the screen in all six episodes. But uh, as a comedy, as a situation comedy, is what it's classed as. It did struggle. So my little thoughts before with this. I mean, you saw my little scores. Thinking that P and P I had up at the start of this uh, this uh, uh, review, uh, I did give it a five out of ten for effort on the basis of a drama rather than a comedy because I quite like watching. I quite like watching Catherine Tate. I quite like watching some of the other characters. Although, as I said, they weren't expanded upon and given much good material to work with. But there was a good good mix of talent for me. I mean, Tate was at her best when she when she plays being drunk or when she sneaks into the old nan persona, if you like, very briefly. Thankfully, the episodes are only 25, 26 minutes, only six of them, so it's it's not a long hike. It, would it have been better as a film? Possibly not, because it would have still lacked a little bit of humour in, in what it would have been billed as. Uh, and that's... Yeah, and that's what it is really. Some it's really painful to watch at times because, say, some characters you, you've got some really good characters, but they're just not built upon. There's nothing, nothing for them to get the teeth into. Uh, so there you go. As a drama for me, just about watchable. If you like Catherine Tate, though a little bit boring. As I said, as a binge watch. If I watch one one a week, it might have been a little bit better. As a situation comedy, though, it falls well flat on what you expect from a situation comedy, and despite a lot of potential. With all these different characters, this little mix of talent, uh, it all sort of revolved around just Catherine Taylor, which was which was a shame, which was a shame. But uh, I say five out of ten for me, not not great, but as I say, I did give it a mark. I, I played with not giving it a mark at all, giving it a no, a no mark, uh, which I do if it's under five out of ten. But I thought no, I did sort of quite like the sort of watching Catherine Tate basically some of the other characters, although as I said. It probably made me smile uh, very infrequently for what's classed as a comedy. So let me know what you think, guys. It'd be great to hear from you. Until we meet again, well, that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone.